paint the picture for us of a young Ginny Rometty walking through the doors of IBM as a systems engineer in Detroit in 1981. I came from a, a single mom um, who, to get us off of food stamps, found her way back to get an associate degree uh, so she could get a job so we could all go to school. So I start there. Um, I'd had a scholarship from General Motors, bless them, through Northwestern University. So I first did work there. Um, so before that, then I went to IBM. So I worked there a year, but as, as I've told Mary Barra, I love what she does and she is passionate about cars. I wanted to apply technology to a lot of things. So I went to IBM and here's what I'll remember of that first day. Of course, I did not have a blue suit, all right? Had not had one. I, I'm not sure I had any suits actually, um, but this is, this is back in time, right? So this is 1981, uh, I had a blue suit. I can remember coming home from work, taking my jacket off, putting it on the couch, and my husband saying, do you realize the price tags are still on your suit? And that's how I remember my first day, and I thought, how gracious, there wasn't a single person who said anything about that. Your mom, how influential was she over the years? She showed us that nobody defines your future, you do it. And uh, we watched that and learned that by, by just looking at what she did. I remember when you took this job in 2011, the New York Times wrote this big piece about your husband and how he was your support system, and um, as all husbands should be. And it had a big impact on me because I think we often think our support systems should be invisible. Um, but then we don't learn how other people do it. And I'd love to know more about how that partnership evolved over the years, especially as you were CEO. I just had my 40th wedding anniversary, and so 40 years. and. You know what I say about Mark, uh, he is he's my biggest fan. And I have been really blessed and lucky to have someone like that by my side who took as much pride and was as, as, you know, tried to learn as much about IBM and be its ambassador, right? I feel he was IBM's ambassador uh, and took as much interest in my clients as I did. So it was a real partnership. And, and clearly I did nothing else but work. So I have such great empathy for women that, you know, have children and all these other responsibilities. I worked and, and Mark really did take care of everything else while I, while I did work. So I was lucky from that sense. Well, I'm sure you're selling yourself a little bit short and he is very lucky to have you as well. Um, I will just say that. Um, you've said you've never thought about yourself as being a woman CEO, but that is how others have often thought of you. Did you find that frustrating over the years or unfair in any way? So that, that's an interesting question from two perspectives because I've often felt when I first became CEO, I really did not want to be labeled that. I wanted to be recognized for what I could accomplish. I think many women feel that way. I think many people feel that way. Um, but I will tell you a different side of that story that as time went on, I did begin to realize this obligation to be a role model. And you could see so many people that would react to not just what I did or, or what I said, but that it was you were a role model for their children, their daughter, someone, themselves. And this idea that you cannot be what you cannot see. I began to internalize that and did feel it was an obligation. And I, I've changed my view about that. And as my tenure went on, you saw me become you know, more vocal about that and more involved in things because I realized, and whether it's a woman or any group, people have got to have role models to see what's possible. And, and that is, in a positive way, an obligation there. Now, with it becomes, I've said to other women as they've taken on their CEO roles, I said, get ready, because everything you do is magnified, everything you do is personalized. I can't tell you that that's fair, but it's what happens. And so just power through and do what it is you think must be done. So what is your advice to young women out there who want to be you, who want to be leaders. It's probably the one piece of advice I am best known for, Emily, around the world. And, and it is my husband that taught me the lesson. It was early in my career. I had uh, interviewed for a job, was offered it, and I was very nervous about taking it. I didn't think I was ready. I thought I needed a few more years. And Mark had said to me when I came home, he said, because I told the person, let me think about this. And I'd come home and Mark said to me, Jenny, do you think a man would have answered the question that way? And in those moments, what I remember is that growth and comfort will never coexist. And so everyone I talk to, I say, look, you just get really comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that when you're uncomfortable, that means you're learning and growing. And so to your earlier question about fear, I view those moments as like wonderful learning opportunities. And that's my biggest advice. So have you re replayed that story to yourself over the years as, as you've had moments where you're saying, you're saying times. a man would not do this? Well, I, what I've replayed to myself more is go put yourself at risk. 
don't worry. If you're nervous about something, fantastic. Or if you're not nervous, equally a concern. Be sure you take on something different and go learn something new. IBM's shares declined during your tenure as CEO, and I wonder if that was frustrating to watch. I know your you know, CEOs always tell us they don't pay attention to the share price, but, but it has to be distracting. And I, and I wonder, is there something you think investors just didn't get? Well, look, it, it, we did return $43 billion to shareholders during my time frame with, with dividend, and, and actually the dividend grew by 100%. But, but clearly, um, obviously, you would want your share price to grow. So, of course, to that. And I think the piece in what we had to undertake was the hard work to reinvent IBM for the long term. And that's what we went about and did. We had a tall order to address. We did it. And so I'm really looking forward to now this next chapter for the company.